this is our quite frankly uh, series and today we have a special guest with us uh, in the series we talk about various issues not financial but still linked to financial wellness uh, because everything we believe is linked to wellness in what we do uh, so we have uh, with us miss shilpa jwani uh, shilpa welcome to our show today thank you uh, so shilpa is the founder and ceo of uno mantra um, this um, is her own uh, uh, company she is a business consultant a leadership growth catalyst i really liked uh, how she phrased catalyst there uh, and uh, she is also a startup mentor she has almost two decades of experience and one of the reasons i think i was uh, really looking forward to our chat today is because of the positivity that i see in your posts uh, shilpa and uh, you know uh, how you talk about change so positively how you talk about resilience so i think uh, my questions today are more my questions as well you know some of these questions that i have and i've been uh, sort of wondering and pondering uh, on uh, so my first question to you shilpa is you know um, whenever we talk of change it's scary right it's not something that people are looking forward to we like being in our own comfortable spaces uh, but change is a necessity if you have to move forward um, so how do you work with change because you not only deal with change you thrive on change uh, so how do you uh, deal with this which is stressful for so, so many people for all of us so thanks firstly for having me um, in your series i think you're doing some brilliant work taking some important messages to the wider audience um and change is a very interesting topic in these times it always has been so i'll tell you my first acknowledgement of change um came when i became an adult and i became responsible for um taking decisions and their consequences but what happened was that uh, you know getting the chance to study economics at a time in 1991 when the economy was going through such massive change and then getting the opportunity to work with very entrepreneurial brands and do startup to scale to business transformation with them um really sort of told me that change is maybe in my dna and i can take it more in my stride so change to me then started to become more like transformation and that was a more positive way to look at it that it will uh, transform or bloom into something else and and that left me with excitement as to okay where will this take me so it was a more positive way to view that which helped and then i think as uh, one grows in life um not just goes through life but grows in life Uh, you do get some wisdom to see change as uh, growth right so the way i see it as uh, you know change is the only constant may have a negative to it i choose to replace the word change with growth and if you say growth is the only constant how beautiful is that so so i think i've had my journey so change as an interruption to transformation to growth that's how i view it and that's how it helps me and works for me rather than against me i think it's beautiful the way you put it uh, because when you're looking at it positively when you've just changed one word i think the whole meaning changes so uh, thanks for that yeah uh, now you'll have to share with us your secret on building resilience mm okay so i think resilience really comes from the word uh, resilire which which is uh, a latin word which means very simply to recoil or to rebound yes um i have an interest in going to the root of words because sometimes that itself gives you a lot of perspective um so my um interest in studying resilience really came when i understood this meaning and i said that what does it take for say a human being or a leader or an organization to develop resilience and to exhibit resilience when it is most needed so if we take our state as this is where i am today and this is what i sort of pulled towards because of a catastrophe because of misfortune or anything which has happened in my life which i see as a negative what is the possibility for me to go back and recoil and rebound to my original state 
And again, what if I could move to a better state than where I was before? So, so what are some of the things again, which will serve me and go for me rather than against me? So I have seen in my study of all resilient people, as well as teams and organizations that uh, they take, I think the good and the bad in their own stride, right? This means that if we look at uh, that life is a continuum and it's a journey, uh, there will be good days, moments, phases and there will be some which we will not like and which will be hardship and tough right but if we take that as already a given i think when it really hits us it will not be an ugly shock and that itself will prepare us uh, because we would have accepted that this would be part of our journey this is not something which has suddenly come up and then you will not get into why me you will get into more like try me uh, yeah, so um, so I think that's the first part. And uh, a lot of our scriptures have said that Suk, Duk, Me Sambhav. And that literally meant that, that, you know, when you're really happy, this too shall pass. When you are really sad and down and out, this too also shall pass. That's life. So just, uh, you know, don't diminish the negative, but tune into the positive. That's the first thing which helps in building resilience. Uh, the second thing which is also interesting is gratitude. Now, there's a lot of literature around uh, writing a gratitude journal, um, feeling good about and thanking, uh, you know, for all the gifts that we've been given, including this life. Um, I feel it's easier said than done because when we get busy, we forget to say thank you. Yeah, uh, just the fact that you and I are having this conversation today is something to be grateful about in the times that we are in today. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel that the more we understand the word gratitude and practice it, I think that itself is uh, the first step towards becoming resilient because gratitude strengthens you from inside. And that's very, very important when you have to recoil back. Yeah. And the third thing that I have uh, seen as being very helpful, and I had heard this on a TED talk um, many years ago, that, um, you know, when this happens, if we just ask ourselves the question that uh, my attitude right now, is it helping me or is it harming me? Right? So the pandemic strikes, say I'm the leader of a business or a startup. And, uh, and then we all group together and, and then we, you know, suffer through the whole thing. Now we can ask ourselves, is our attitude right now of giving up, of uh, saying how bad it is, how everything is doomsday, is it helping us or is it harming us? And just by asking us, uh, ourselves that question, we can actually start to ask ourselves a better question. Right. And I've seen that if we practice this long enough, uh, we will start to make bridges and connect with people who can help us out rather than building walls and, and you know, harming ourselves by living inside those walls of grief, as I call them. So reach out, uh, take support and, um, and nothing really is the end of the world if you, um, you know, stay persistent. Wow, that's some fantastic advice, uh, Shilpa. I, I'm especially looking at that try me and not why me. You know, I, I'm, I'm so impressed with this. And the going to the root of the words, I think, just changes your whole sort of perspective. And I think sometimes that's what you need. And I think most times that's what you need. Uh, when you spoke about recoil, I just have another question about recoiling. A lot of times going back, um, is taken as negative because to recoil you have to go back right uh, that's taken as negative how, how does one deal with that um, so I think again it's about perspective Shweta because uh, when you've been pulled to in your opinion what is negative territory uh, recoiling back from the negative territory into your neutral space or where you were before that's not really uh, such a bad thing and in any case, I believe that sometimes just taking a step back is one of the most beautiful things that you can do. Um, because what you do is you take that step back as something to energize you and renew you and ground you, right? And that is a great position. Athletes, what do they do? 
right? When, when you are, um, you know, competing so many times, you need to step back, uh, get into the power position and then run forward. Um, so, so many times, I think that's actually essential in life. Even if there's no catastrophe or misfortune, it's a good thing to do. Step back, breathe, be mindful of where I am, because that will tell you where do I want to go next. And you will approach that more mindfully then. True, true. So I'm going to ask you a question from a startup point of view, because you're talking about perspectives, attitude, you know, and uh, things that you need to take a step back uh, from. Sometimes as startups are often doing, you know, we want to do everything at once or everything is important. Everything becomes a priority. According to you, what are three things that startups do that uh, uh, because of which they fail to scale up? You know, it could be a successful startup, but scaling up could just be a big issue. So three mistakes that they do. And uh, at the same time, I want to know three things that you would definitely recommend startups to do so that they can scale up. So um, I work a lot with startups, um, uh, you know, as an advisor, as a mentor, uh, and I've been someone who's uh, been inside of startups herself, right? So I totally empathize and I wouldn't call it mistakes, but I, I would say that those are learning opportunities. So, um, so one thing which I've seen is that um, um, they go for perfection. I mean, so this is one breed that I have uh, personally experienced. So they would sit down and perfect the product. Um, they would perfect their pitch deck. They would perfect the brand elements. So it's really about, okay, when we feel ready, then we will go ahead and launch. When we feel ready, then we will go ahead and hire those team members. When we feel ready, right? So uh, they keep postponing. Mm. And business, um, you know, has timing, uh, which is of absolute essence. In a competitive world, you cannot afford to delay. So I feel that perfection becomes the enemy of uh, really, you know, scaling up and becoming bigger. Sometimes it's actually even the enemy of launching an idea into, um, you know, the, the launch mm. stage. Um, the second thing that they um, uh, do, and uh, and that's very, very evident, because when you're inside a startup, you don't realize it. Um, it is the lack of uh, planning for resources, right? Because everybody is busy with the hustle. Uh, the whole attitude is, uh, you know, let's roll up our sleeves and let's get this done. The energy is infectious. But, you know, sometimes when you're running in the same place, it might seem like, you know, it's great and there's energy and um, burning calories, but you're not going anywhere. Yeah. So, so that's where I think it's essential. So the first P was perfection. The second is really planning. And if um, they do take out the time to get away from the business, so spending time um, on your business rather than all the time in your business. I think that's also something which uh, is a very important differentiator between teams that eventually scale and win and the teams that stay small or sometimes don't even survive. And the third differentiator I've seen is uh, people. And uh, ultimately, a startup is, you know, I would say 90% plus about the people. Uh, people can even make a, a semi okay product into a hero product eventually. So if you have the right people around you, um, I think uh, those people lead you to great processes, uh, which leads you to scale up. So, so that's something which I think is, um, you know, something which I've seen in my experience. It's perfection, it's planning or rather the lack of it, and people, not the right people in the right place on your bus. Um, so, so those are things which avoid the scaling up. And very simply put, I think if you just look at uh, these in the positive sense, um, can I um, have my purpose defined very, very clearly as a startup, right? Because your people rally around your purpose. And that purpose gives you clarity whether you are solving a real world problem or not, right? So uh, that really allows you to then create your minimum viable product and then, you know, go through the next steps. But if your purpose statement is not clear to you, why am I doing this? Then you will get lost and scaling up will not happen. You define this well, stick by it, everything will happen. The second is people and culture. 
Um, who do you attract on your team and what kind of a culture you are building? Um, culture also determines how you will scale up, right? Um, because sometimes you attract people who are good for today, but they will not help you to scale up. And then if you as the founder uh, or co-founders are not, um, you know, pushing enough uh, for the business to scale by showing your vision and rallying your troops around you by building a good culture, not having the right team members or the people with you, uh, scale is very far away. Uh, it will happen, but it will crumble. Um, the third thing is processes. And that becomes very, very big because, you know, I'm a big believer that if you can create systems for your everyday repetitive tasks sooner than later, that's a very big plus. What can you automate? Right? Where can you drive efficiency? Where can your compliances be uh, outsourced to someone who knows how to deal with them rather than, uh, you know, playing uh, by, you know, making mistakes and, and uh, leaving it to higher powers to solve it for you. So, so that's something which I, I definitely feel there. So again, purpose, your people, as well as your processes will help you scale fast. I think some great advice uh, for our uh... Uh, viewers who are uh, founders or co-founders and I especially love the advice where you said you know spend time on the business not just in the business I think a lot of us just end up spending time in the business and we forget to sort of have an outside uh, view sometimes and that may be the differentiator between you know scaling up and not being able to do that yeah so, so this is a question for our, uh, our clients and viewers who are CXOs, right? So a lot of times I hear this uh, saying, you know, it's lonely at the top or, you know, I don't really have a support system that will understand the unique challenges that I have, be it, you know, managing time, managing teams, uh, whatever it is, you know, managing boards. Um, so uh, tell me, how does one, you know, build a support system that one can uh, trust and rely on? Such a great question, Shweta. And this is something I've personally experienced. You know, one always has read about how lonely it is at the top. But, uh, you know, as a managing director, um, uh, I, I realized what that really meant. And I was also a relatively young managing director. So suddenly when you find yourself in that situation, um, you are a leader and others look up to you. So there are a lot of things you cannot share. Um, uh, family, you can burden them with your woes only up to this much mm -hmm. and they, they do not understand your business in its entirety. So, um, uh, and then friends uh, sometimes have a bias for you and your uh, safety. So they may not give the most unbiased advice. So who do you turn to, right? Yes. So it's a very genuine concern and, and I, I know so many who have that. Um, so I'm a leadership advisor to several leaders, uh, founders, CEOs, and, uh, and this is one reason why they reach out to people like myself is because they need advice they can trust. They need someone who can empathize with them, but also challenge them when they need to be challenged so that uh, they are performing at their best, right? Um, but otherwise, you know, uh, out of my own experience, the advice I would give is that firstly, do some inner work. Um, know who you are as a person and as a leader. Uh, once you know your authentic self, uh, what are my values? What are the beliefs? Uh, what is it that I truly want uh, for myself and my business, my organization? Then start to seek people who have similar values, similar beliefs, right? Um, and uh, begin to forge connections intentionally. Don't leave that to chance. Hmm. What happens is most people end up thinking, oh, I need to network. And yeah. then they you know, try and join every networking event, yeah. every webinar, every virtual meeting they can get, uh, you know, uh, an uh, invite to. I would say that's really, uh, in a way, mindless and, and a big waste of time. It burns you out. It does not give you the kind of uh, deep connections that would be helpful. And honestly, what you need are not too many, just three to five people who can be your sounding board or your personal advisory board. So the way to look at it is uh, treat these people like your personal advisory board, right? Yeah. Um, and your advisors uh, can be people who are from the same industry or not. 
but uh, have uh, you know built something uh, of value by themselves right um, they are people for whom you can do something as well so start by giving first what yeah. can you give to them right before you start taking from them uh, the third is that um, set up meetings intentionally can you meet them for breakfast can you uh, you know uh, uh, do some book club readings together so it doesn't always have to be when you have a problem that you reach out to them you can yeah. also do some fun and interesting things together another nice way is that i've seen some people join masterminds right masterminds are classically created and curated with people who are like minded uh, with similar challenges and opportunities and it's a high profile high quality group of people so sometimes when you don't get enough inspiration inside or from the peer group uh, this is also something that you can go out and seek um the third would be networking events for sure that's where you do find a lot of good people but do it intentionally see what works for you what goes with your values beliefs and who you want to be in life right um and then you will start to find people um be very mindful who you allow because you do become the average of five people you surround yourself mostly with i'm i'm quite a believer in that right um and uh, and it's it's not rocket science done intentionally it is possible for every cxo to have their own advisory board so that's some interesting points you brought up right uh, networking especially you know all of us we, we sort of cringe at the uh, uh, you know thought of networking at least a lot of introverts do and contrary to what people may believe i think a lot of uh, cxos are introverts while they may be comfortable uh, you know uh, in public forums and uh, all that but uh, a lot of them at least a, a lot of them that i have met a lot of them are introverts so networking yeah. then is is something which uh, not just uh, uh, you know it's it's another big task that burns them out because while they may be great at it it still burns you out it takes up a lot of energy so i think uh, giving i think that comes a little easier than you know asking for something because then you hesitate uh, and you don't know uh, whom to do whom to ask uh, and things like that but giving is definitely easier uh so now at this point of giving i'm going to ask you to give some advice to young women uh, because we do a lot of work with uh, uh, women as well and march uh, is now we we'll, we'll have women's day coming up so we'll have a lot of events around women uh, but what's your advice to young women who wish to be successful like you uh, shilpa um shweta firstly for me i think it starts by thinking that every day is women's day so don't wait for march 8th every year to feel special or wait for somebody else to make you feel special um you know accept yourself um and uh, love yourself and uh, respect yourself uh, i think that's something which is uh, important but just to make it a little bit more concrete and fun at the same time i do the abc today okay so there are okay. three abc we'll do okay. so the first abc as per me is um always be creating okay abc always be creating what do you create you create a life and career out of intention and not accident okay okay so so be mindful of your um goals be mindful of the milestones you want to uh, hit and be mindful of how you would want to plan out your career as well as your life uh right uh, don't compare that with anybody else because nobody's journey is uh, you know like yours you are unique start from that and start from her place of intention as to this is who i want to be and this is what i want my life and this is what i want my career to be like uh and i've seen that when you start to get that clarity uh i think it's something which is uh, beautiful and uh you start getting a lot of support a lot of people rally around you because you are clear so um yeah so always be creating the life that you want so that's the first abc the second really as for me is the other abc which means always be communicating and what do you communicate you communicate your unique personal brand right um and that's where i um insist that all women first of all think of themselves um as a brand 
and not just as a person because then you treat yourself as uh, being somebody of value a brand has value it has equity yeah. right yeah. um and uh, and it's to be treated and uh, grown with love uh, and creativity and passion um so that's where uh, i really highly encourage uh, women to always be communicating their personal brand take control on the narrative of your story it's a beautiful story so don't allow others to decide how they would want to tell your story um and if you are not telling your story uh, you are actually um allowing the others to guess what you would want that story to be told like yeah, yeah. so if you don't like them calling you uh, shy or not ready for a position or she can't handle stress or she has two babies and how will she become a ceo um if you don't want them to be saying all of those things then you better be saying what you want them to say about you yeah. right which is taking control over your personal brand having a voice and using it when you need to um and showing up with your presence your authentic unique presence with pride each time every time so that's the second abc and the third abc is um to me really about always be confident um easier said than done i agree um you know we all have our moments men and women yeah. where we don't feel our confident best where we feel like an imposter in so many situations um but i that's why you have to remember the abc right always be confident um because when you show up um, confidently uh, you actually do a lot of service to those around you because if you are confident in yourself others will feel confidence in you that's the starting point yes yeah. and how do you um show up with confidence um show up with confidence by uh, learning new things all the time upskilling yourself don't wait for the organization to enroll you into a training program uh, take charge get a coach if you want to enroll yourself into a course that appeals to you talk to intelligent people and thirdly connect with people from whom you can learn something about life and business Uh, seek out mentors seek out sponsors don't be at the mercy of other people to do that yeah. for you right yeah. um so uh, always be confident so three c's uh, you know there uh, the abc is rather and uh, and i think these are simple ways but if done um methodically consistently and consciously uh, they can um, lead our women to a much better place they'll feel good about themselves and they'll be a role model for many others what i have done is nothing spectacular honestly it's just following my heart and building things um, yeah pieces that really and and uh, planning ahead uh, wherever i i could we didn't have access to you know a lot of resources which women have today so there's absolutely no excuse go out and uh, become your best version the world needs it thanks so much shilpa thanks so much for these abc's i think it's easier to remember and uh, some fantastic advice for women for cxos for founders i think overall um, you've just covered uh, the entire spectrum thanks so much for being on our show shilpa thank you for having me all the very best to everybody who's listening to us today including you shweta good luck thank you mm-hmm.